Sir Keir Starmer, on Hamas's terrorism in the Middle East, you're standing shoulder to shoulder with the Israelis and with the United Kingdom, but you're a human rights lawyer by trade. What stage do you withdraw that support? Gaza, for example, having its water cut off, are you happy with that? Well, I think there are some fundamental principles, obviously, in play. The first of those is that this, and what we've seen is appalling, it's shocking, cold-blooded murder, of men, women and children, hostage taking. That is terrorism, terrorist acts of Hamas who bear responsibility. And it follows from that that Israel has the right to defend herself and to take action to try to make sure that the hostages are brought back safely. But responsibility lies with Hamas. That obviously any action by any state um, must be within international law, but Hamas should release the hostages straight away. And I think that we need to be very clear about where responsibility is in this awful series of events that we've seen over the last few days. Labour is performing well in the polls, there's no doubt about that. But our recent exclusive talk poll suggests that your leadership is perhaps not as popular as some elements of your party. Why should people trust you to deliver? Well, I judge myself and our party on the progress we've made since 2019 when we lost an election very badly. We changed our party, we turned it round and yesterday I was able to speak not just to the Labour conference but to the country. Along the way we've won by-elections, we won a by-election in Selby unprecedented to overturn a 20,000 Tory majority. Last week I was up in Rutherglen where we um, beat the SNP in a very significant by-election. So I don't look so much at the polls, I look at what's happening in the ballot box. But yesterday was a very significant day because I was able to say we don't have to continue with decline, which we've seen for the last 13 years. We can have a decade of national renewal and to reach beyond traditional Labour voters to you know, Tory voters, SNP voters who are in despair about their own parties to say this is a national project, this is a place where those that want to see a better country can join together in a project of national renewal. We've waited four years, worked very hard to get to that point. In persuading people who may not naturally be Labour voters, there are a lot of people, a lot of Talk TV viewers and listeners who really care about immigration. That was something you didn't mention in your speech yesterday, but you've already said that you'll axe the Rwanda flights plan even if it works. How will you solve the issue of immigration and by when could we expect to see results? I think strong action needs to be taken. This is a deep cause for concern. Nobody should be crossing the channel in those boats. I think the first thing we have to do is take back control of our borders. I think the government's lost control of the borders. The way that I would do that would be to smash the criminal gangs that are running this vile trade. Before I was a politician, I was the chief prosecutor for England and Wales, and I worked with other countries to take down terrorist gangs. So I know it can be done. Those boats that are being used to put people into the water are being made to order, transported to the north coast of France and this vile trade is earning millions for gangs. We must take them down. So the first step is take control of our borders. That's where the government has got it so wrong. By when? How, how far into a prime ministerial uh, period would you do that? Month? Would, two months? I would want to start this straight away and that's why I was over um, with Europol which is where there's coordinated police action just the other month talking about security and how quickly we could set up these operations. We have to break the gangs that are running this vile trade. And you know, this is where the failure of the government has been at its most extreme because it's lost control of the borders. And I don't doubt that that's a great concern um, to everybody watching or listening to this programme or any of your programmes. Of course it is. What we need is practical solutions to break the problem at source, not more rhetoric or gimmicks that are not working. You talked a lot about the cost of living yesterday in your speech. Taxes are at their highest level as a proportion of what the country makes since the Second World War. Wouldn't a tax cut be something to consider to get more money back in the pockets of working people? Well, you're right. Under this government, we've got the highest levels of taxation since the Second World War. So the cycle we're in now is high tax and low growth. I see the way out of this as growth, which is why that was central to my speech Isn't that a yesterday. big gamble? 
No, it's absolutely vital. I actually think if you look around the country, you've got incredible innovation, incredible businesses, incredible communities who have ambition about the future. What they need is a government that matches that ambition. We have to get our economy working. And I don't just mean in London and the South East. Of course, London and the South East, you know, a real engine um, of um, growth in our economy. But I want this to be growth and building our economy in all parts of the United Kingdom so that everywhere, wherever you live, you feel the benefits by raised living standards. Final question, what are you going to do to solve the crisis in the NHS? Well, the first thing that we need to do is to bring down the waiting lists. And that's why I said in my speech yesterday, we'll get rid of the non-DOM tax status. That allows the super rich to avoid paying their tax in this country. I don't agree with that. And to use that money to ensure we've got a plan to bring down the waiting list, 2 million appointments a year, 40,000 a week, to drive that down. That's good for the NHS good for the individuals who are on waiting lists, but also good for the economy because more people will be back and able to go to work. Sir Keir Starmer, thank you very much indeed for talking to Talk TV. Thank you.